If you want to pay for college and not go broke, you will need to put some serious effort in planning for it and be ready to do some work. Now, here with some tips on how to prepare for that journey, Cam Justice with Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union. Hello, thanks for joining us. Good morning. How are you doing? I am doing okay. Um, I am especially interested in this topic because I have a nine year old and a 12 year old. And although most people would say it's still early, um, I'm already thinking about college because. It's going to be that much more expensive by the time they're in school, right? Uh, which kind of leads into my first question is, when should parents begin their college financial planning? Well, the sooner the better, really. Uh, you can start now. That'd be the best way to go. Uh, there are different programs that can be had. The best is to just start putting away money for any little thing. Every little bit helps. There are programs like the 529. Mm -hmm. That way you can accrue the money and that way when it comes to actually putting your kid into school, you have something put away, whether that's just for housing, for books, again, anything really helps. Yeah, it adds up. And when you start early, I mean, I'm always shocked, you know, because we put a little bit when the kids were born. We took a break when we were, you know, buying a home and we couldn't sure. contribute as much as we wanted. Um, and then now we're contributing again. But it all adds up. And when that statement comes in the mail, we're like, wow, look, it grew this much. Yes. <laughs> right? So imagine if you start early, by the time they're 18, uh, you will be that much more ahead of the game. Right. right? And even if it's a freshman or a sophomore, again, just starting starting yeah. is key and then once you start you just feel better about it and you can see that grow you, absolutely um, for if you're in high school you know say you're a freshman a sophomore junior what advice would you give to them when it comes to applying for scholarships and grants because those that's another great way to pay for college yes absolutely grants and scholarships uh, any kind of uh, free money is is huge and people shouldn't underestimate it but the the best advice that we can give is to go for it anything anything can help so if it's the small ones the the things that you don't think will add up those are key because everybody's going to shoot for that big one but if there's less competition for the smaller ones yeah, you can yeah. Get that There's going. no such thing as a small scholarship, right? A thousand dollars, five hundred dollars. Again, it all adds up. Um, but you know, there are so many scholarships out there. We've had different organizations come on, and they're like, you know, <clears throat> depending on what your nationality is, depends on what you're studying. I mean, right. there's so many scholarships out there that people don't know about. So really, it's just putting in the time to do some research. Right. Um, and you never know, you right. know, you yeah. could end up... You never know. Yeah. It doesn't hurt to ask. We offer scholarships for undergraduate and graduate students. And so if they ask, you can apply, and you just don't know which organization will be willing to sponsor a right. child. But if you don't ask and you don't put in, you know, if you don't try, right, Correct. you don't know. Uh, you'll never get it. Um, what advice do you have for those high school seniors who are actually getting their acceptance letters right now? Well, first of all, congratulations. Uh, it's a huge deal and then with acceptance packages usually they come with tips on where to apply for uh, different financial aids fafsa uh, a good thing to remember as well if the programs that you're going for the scholarships and grants that you're trying to apply for don't cover fafsa has also started three months earlier so instead of it being in uh, the end of the year it's now in october so you can start applying for that financial aid earlier uh, so it's it's a key thing to remember that even though you got in, there's still plenty that you got to do, and the easy planning is, is huge. Plus, to look at private loans, keep it kind of as a last resort, but it can still be uh, a way to go in order to get that education that you really want. Right. Anything else you'd like to, to any other tips you have for us? Uh, just simple things, just knowing the difference between uh, subsidized and unsubsidized loans. It's key to know that what you're getting into, just the specifics of uh, what's going to be covered by the government while you're in school for paying for that interest that's going to accrue versus the unsubsidized, which you're going to be taking on that interest from the very beginning. Right. You definitely want to know the difference. Yes, definitely want to know. <laughs> right. Because I remember getting out of college and like, ah, you know, how much do I owe? Oh, right. boy. And how much every month? I mean, you got to know the numbers. Right. When you start to pay and then when you're 
going to have to make those payments. Right. Yeah, that's that's important. And once you have figured all that out, how you're going to pay for college, don't forget to have fun. Yes, right? exactly. <laughs> very, very, very true. Because this is going to be a, a very important part of your life, and you want to make sure that you enjoy it. It's not just crunching the numbers; that you have a lot of fun. Yeah, and hard work. Yes, and says, hard work. Says mom. Says mom. <laughs> all right, Cam. Thank you so much. Oh, thank Thanks you very much. Us.